The greetings and welcome, brave citizens of our new world. My name is Dr. Holocaust. I am Toronto, Ontario's greatest supervillain and the evil genius. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about creating a better world. Excellent. A better world. So we've done it. Let's say, theoretically, we've conquered the world. It is now ours for the shaping, ours to do with as we please, but as any good toy set or game of The Sims, there is a level of responsibility and awareness that follows drowning Mr. Golf in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, his wife is so amazing, and if you kill them, then you get all of his money. <laughs> I know! And it's like a children's game, and it's frighteningly real. <laughs> So this is basically talking about the things that I would do were I to have conquered the world, say, tomorrow. And we start with immortality. And I know what you're thinking. That's a big step. <laughs> conquered the world, suddenly administer immortality to everybody. That seems like a bit steep, right? It's actually not as steep as you'd think. So, first of all, before we get into immortality, we've got to understand mortality. What makes us age? What makes us grow old? Right? Telomere degradation. Does anybody know what telomere is? <laughs> uh, I think uh, we got one person's life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Telomere is basically on either end of a DNA strand. Telomere are these little proteins that hold the DNA strand together. But every time your DNA or your cells divide, the telomere kind of degrades a little bit. It's like a fuse that slowly gets shorter and shorter until the cells eventually just age and die. This happens at the end of your developmental stage. Humans have these like two-stage system where you're born and you grow and develop until you reach your late teens, early twenties, and you stop growing, and then your body starts a clock. And you basically start to die at that point for the next, like, we hope 60 years, uh, or some point shorter thereafter, you slowly start to degrade and fall apart. We do that because it's coded in our DNA. We're supposed to do this. I know, and it's a total freaking bummer. Because here's the thing, all life on this planet exists in an attempt to try to find a way to perfect itself. Every generation, there's always these small mutations, this roll of the dice that life tries. It's just trying something. It's like, I don't know, let's put legs on this one. Let's see if it does, if it does better than the ones with not legs. Um, or let's put more legs on it. Or let's put its bones on the outside this time. Or, like, there's all these really cool things that nature's been trying since life began. However it started, religion or science or whatever you believe, life has been intrinsically trying to find perfection, which is natural selection. The ones that aren't strong enough and can't make it in the environment die off, and their genes and DNA doesn't get passed on to the next uh, generation. They don't evolve in that direction. So if they make something with, say, no skin, and it dies really fast, they're like, well, shit, that didn't work. <laughs> So I guess we're not going to do that again. And it's, let's think, it's code, it's sequences, the programming that makes us who we are doesn't get passed on. But the ones that end up being friggin' huge, like the mountain from Game of Thrones, back in the day, that guy's DNA would have got passed around all over the place. <laughs> He'd have had a whole country as big as him. Like, yeah, see, Genghis Khan, he was just like, I'm gonna just affect the DNA of the future entire human race on my own. So, yeah, no, he was great. Um, so, reaching immortality. This is not to be confused with invulnerability. You will not age under immortality. Invulnerability means you cannot be harmed. You can still die of accidents, which is great, because a lot of people still do. Um, but under immortality, you just don't age anymore. This can be achieved through things like genetic engineering. Oh my god, cats, look! Yeah, it's fuzzy bridges! Fuzzy bridges! <laughs> Radioactive fuzzy bridges, yeah. Because here's the thing, genetic engineering is when they copy-paste... What are you doing, Minnie? What are you up to? I'm gonna bring immediate attention to you. Uh, what do you need? How can I help you? Genetic engineering is when somebody copy-pastes DNA code from one species to another. In order to get, say, glowing cats, 
What they do is they copy pasted some code from a jellyfish. This is the bioluminescent part of their DNA, the little piece of programming in their DNA, which goes on for billions of lines, that says bioluminescent flesh. They basically copied that and went and said, let's see if we can find something to stick this in. And they found it, and it actually fits in cats somehow. <laughs> so they turned that on, and you got glow in the dark cats. That's wild. No more trip on them. I know. And they've been trying this copy pasting genetic code. They've been trying to do. Just, just genetic engineering for a really long time, trying to figure out how to stop aging through something like genetic engineering, but it's really difficult because almost no species on the planet has actually achieved the ability to never age. No, no, you sit, sit, sit. <laughs> if I don't get, if I don't get Five. to the front, you don't. Let me! Oh, no, See you tomorrow, Carl! See you tomorrow, Mike. I love you. Glowing cats. So it's glowing cats. Um, it's been really hard to do this because every species on the planet ages and dies. And the reason for that is, thank you, is because in order for us to pass our genetic code on to the next generation, the previous generation has to die out and make room. It's a really awesome system. Nature invented this really cool thing where we're constantly cycling out new genetic material and rolling the dice over and over, trying new things, slowly perfecting life. But human beings have existed outside of the natural selection circle for like 2,000 years? Easily? Since the dawn of civilization, basically. The second we built a house, nature was like, well, shit. <laughs> I don't know, malaria, maybe? <laughs> like, you can't get shit. Can't like you. So the weather doesn't get you anymore. Bears are like I don't know walls. <laughs> what are walls? I don't know. I'm gonna go eat berries and sleep for six months. <laughs> so what is synthetic biology? In May 2010, J. Craig Venter's company Scientist. This is gonna get really wordy. Synthetic Genomics announced that it had made the world's first organism with a completely synthetic genome. According to Venter, this organism was the first self-replicating species on the planet whose entire biological makeup was created by a computer. So they wrote, not even a nanomachine, they wrote a genetic organism from scratch. And this happened in 2010, and yeah, people just didn't fucking know this. Because no one wants to talk about it. Because literally just after it came out, like, uh, the entire, there's like a name, like the Geneva Convention or something, like the entire world was basically like, stop it. <laughs> like, immediately. Anything that is within human beings or any kind of single-celled organisms that interact with human beings in any way cannot be tested on. And people caught doing so will be, like, punished by the UN or something. Which is why I'm going to make a really big research ship and just sail out into international waters and do my research out there. And the rest of the world can suck it. <laughs> with synthetic biology, one could create things like naturally replicating rubber for tires. So tires that naturally heal. They've actually made these, and it's insane. <laughs> Living, healing tires, which is wild. Have a seat, Chris. <laughs> hey, I know, if you guys want to, if you folks who are coming in, if you guys want to find a seat, go right ahead. Renewable bioacrylic. Anybody who knows anything about painting or a lot of stuff to do with machining and plastics, acrylic is kind of hard to make and it's sort of expensive. Under the right conditions, they have single-celled organisms that produce almost infinitely. And they do things like make healing tires, renewable bioacrylic producing biofuels and renewable chemicals as petroleum alternatives, which have been made, but patented and put inside of somebody's warehouse because there's a lot of people that stand to lose a lot of money if we stop using oil. Increasing rates of natural fermentation for polymers. That's a thing. Um, plastics fill up our landfills and don't go anywhere. They have created single-celled organisms that just eat plastic and then die off after like uh, two months? Not even. It's a couple of days. They just spray this stuff over plastic and it just eats it. Just breaks it down into like nothing. It's so wild. <laughs> but that's the thing, is they're like, oh, what if it mutates? What if it changes and turns into something scary and starts eating people instead? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that doesn't happen. You know why? Because there's actually code in our DNA that tells us to mutate. To try different things. They just don't include that. 
So this single-celled organism cannot change as it replicates. It does not have the ability to mutate and attempt different things. Now, I'm going to say, oh, nature finds a way kind of thing. You know why nature finds a way? Because we're coded to. <laughs> If it could breed, yes. which it, could. which this one does, <laughs> like, that's the thing. Is they're just like, oh, but what if it does this? Well, we didn't tell it to do that, so it's not going to do that thing. It's like, we, we, again, with with uh, copy pasting genetic engineering, you run into a lot of problems like that. It is really easy for stuff to get out of control because you're moving whole segments of genetic code onto another species that you don't know how it's going to interact with their code and you don't know how it's going to affect them and how they're going to change as a result of that. And even if you have the desired results for a small amount of time, it could still change further down the road. Synthetic biology doesn't allow that. It's like saying, well, what if this concrete block turns into a tree tomorrow? Like, well, the odds that that's going to happen, son, are just really fucking slim. <laughs> I trust that this brick will not become a tree. One could also create something called biobricks which are DNA sequences that could turn certain codes or functions in a living organism's DNA on or off. So you can find segments of your code and just shut it off. Or find segments of your code and just turn them on. Like you can find that thing that's like wings or scales or, or gills or something like that. You're like, yeah, I feel like being a fish today. Like, and that's cool. And you think it's not that simple, it's that simple. <laughs> it's, this, is, this is some really wild stuff if you, if you, if you look into the research. So how it works. Ronald DeFino and a team of Harvard colleagues experimented on mice to see what would happen when steps are taken to stop telomeres from shortening. So that lovely piece of protein, that little fuse that dictates how old you are and when you start to fall apart. Just, what, what would happen if they made a change there? They bred a group of genetically engineered mice that lacked the ability to produce telomeres, which is a chemical that telomeres made from. And watch as these mice showed rapid and very eerily onset symptoms of aging. Now, then they gave the mice injections of these biobricks to reactivate the telomeres enzyme, expecting to see that the aging process would slow to normal levels. Instead, they watched in astonishment as the mice appeared to age backwards. <laughs> their, their withered organs were repairing themselves even to the point that new neurons began to sprout in their brains. No, that is really perfectly impressive. normal, which is interesting because here's the thing. You're in your developmental stage. The first half of your life, when you go from baby to young adult, what's happening at that point? Your brain is creating new neurons. They have the saying that old dogs can't learn new tricks because your brain has stopped producing neurons. It's harder and harder as the days go on to form new memories. Imagine now that that's not a problem. That you learn like it as, as fast and you pick things up as easily as a teenager does for the rest of your life, for hundreds of years even. And you can even administer this to older people because it's like, yeah, if you could just stop someone aging, they would grow up to the point where they were a young adult and then they just wouldn't age. That's cool. But how can you administer this to the elderly? They don't want to be 80 years old forever. That sucks. <laughs> that super sucks. But what if you could administer it to this person and they slowly, over another 80 years, age backwards? Because your body, like, I can't get up from a hangover and no sleep and eating nothing but junk food from th for three days in a row like I used to ten years ago. Because, like, like, damn, I could take punishment then. I can't now. I'm like, I'm turning into an old man. Um, really I know, you don't look like you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but you look so young. Yeah. Um, it slowly... <laughs> if I had a lawn for you to get up... Uh, if you could slowly age backwards, though, and get back to that state, people would be healthy, happy, could take a lot more punishment physically, could learn a lot more, and live a lot longer, indefinitely at that point. This isn't a thing that is science fiction. I'm telling you this right now. They have achieved this already by adapting these bio bricks to mice. These mice share over 90% of their DNA genetic makeup with humans. And eyebrows should raise, yes. <laughs> Gasp, you should. In essence, Ooh. repairing the telomeres seem to be able to reverse the aging process and make mice physiologically younger despite already suffering the ravages of age. So implementing immortality in society. Benefits and concerns. So benefits, you run on things like 
Patience. Why are people impatient, do you think? Patience. Because we all have a finite clock and we only have so many hours. Exactly. We're all going to die. Nobody likes that. <laughs> if you tell someone that death is inevitable, that no matter how careful you are, no matter how clean you live your life, you're still going to kick the bucket. And even then, the last 20, 40 years of that's going to be shit. <laughs> Like, literally. No. Literally. <laughs> bedpans and things. It's going to be awful. Like, if you manage to still maintain decent health in the latter years of your life, good on you. You're like the last, like, 5% of humanity that can manage that. But you tell someone that they have an infinite amount of time to work at their shitty job, to, to save up for that house they like, to get a car, to, to, to learn to be a doctor like they've always wanted to. All of those things become trivial now when you tell someone that they have eternity to achieve those goals. Because why are people impatient? Because we want all of those really awesome parts of our life now so that we can enjoy them as much as we can before life gets shitty. That's gonna happen to everybody unless you fix something like this. So patience, people will become infinitely patient. If you tell them that they have an eternity to do whatever it is that they're doing, they're not going to slow down. They're still only going to have so many hours in a day to get things done. But they're, gonna, they're not going to worry about tomorrow. They will, however, worry about the environment because there is a lot of people that are just like, yeah, you know what, I don't have to worry about the environment really because I'm going to die in like another 60 years. And who gives a shit? Like, fuck the next generation. They can pick up my mess. I don't care. And if you tell someone like, hey, congratulations, this mess is now your mess forever, then they're going to be like, oh, hey, so electric cars are a great idea, right? Can, we, can I get some of that right now? Can I get some? Anyways. I for everyone. Yeah. Oh god, Tesla's such a panty dropper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clay, you should. You know how many you know how many girls I've talked to that are like, uh, oh, Tesla. Sploosh. Drop the money. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's real. Like it's not a fit like anyway, experience is another thing. Remember, you are able to pick things up and learn things as well as you could when you were like in your teens, when you were in high school and in grade school. You can learn new languages. The experience. Imagine, if I was about to go in for surgery under a knife, to a doctor who had successfully completed every surgery for the last 200 years. Yeah. Pretty good. I'd feel good about good. that. Because <laughs> you never want a doctor who's had six surgeries and three of them haven't gone well. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's like, and how long has he been at that? Like, oh, well, I've been, you know, training to be a doctor for the last 15 years, and I just killed a guy on a table. Shit. <laughs> Reschedule. Yeah, like, I won't go back to school. How long have you been training to be a doctor? 300 years? There will be a reintroduction of natural selection. Remember that people, now that they live forever... Hunger game. Yeah. The idiots of society who decide to live recklessly or live poorly at that point will still kill themselves off. And their genetic material will not continue on to the next generation. And we'll get into that in a minute, but... There will be a slow, steady reintroduction of natural selection. There will also be a loss of the elderly class. The amount of money the government... Yeah, clap, you should. Uh, <laughs> nobody likes old people. Old people suck. Even old people don't like old people. Yeah, even old people don't like old people. They're like, oh, shit. Shit, I'm old. I'm the thing I hate. I've become. I can get off my own lawn. Damn. That's the thing. With no elderly class, you now have no more homes, no more money being poured into retirement, pension, all that stuff. You work for 60 years and then take a vacation. Take a vacation for a couple of years. The government will pay that off your pension for like a little bit and then you get back to work. Nobody cares. Like, like, because here's the thing, because if you told somebody that like, oh, they get up and they're having a really good time uh, this year, and they're partying, and they're having a great life, and life is pretty awesome. People have a pretty short attention span, just as it is. Um, and you tell someone, like, next year, you're just going to have to keep doing the same thing you're doing this year. Is that cool? They'd be like, yeah, that's fine. I'll have, like, a vacation for, like, a few weeks during the summer. I just keep working. It's great. If you tell someone that they'll never be able to retire, that the government will never pay them a pension so that they can just do nothing for like 20 years or something like that, nobody's really gonna complain. Because no one can do it. Like if that's what you're working towards, that sucks because you're basically saying, I wanna get paid to live for free when I can't live anymore. And again, if you have an infinite amount of time, 
you can slowly start putting money away in the bank. You can take out a high interest like uh, the bank savings account and just slowly, every year, if you only put in a dollar, eventually you'll have a million dollars if you live long enough. And you just keep putting money away. And there's your pension, ta-da. Like, you don't have to worry about the government having to give you this money anymore because the government needs to spend that money on other things that are more important than supporting the elderly class. Like, they need our support now, but if we get rid of that through a system like this, then we no longer have to. Which is the thing. I'm not looking to kill a bunch of people and just throw all the elderly people into a giant pit and light them on fire. A thousand generations wide. I don't want to do that. Kind of fun that sounds. Um, yeah, I know. Concerns you were looking into on this, though, are things like population control. Because if everybody's just allowed to have kids willy-nilly whenever they want, then that's going to become an issue. And we'll get into that in the next section. Expectations for work could become unreasonable. No one's going to want to hire you to work at a Starbucks if all their baristas have been there for 50 years. Yeah, <laughs> that's deep. To be a barista, 50 years experience minimum to be a barista, do you want to do that? It's ridiculous. I tried to get a job as a dishwasher, and they were literally, this, on, the, on the help wanted sign, they were looking for someone that had 10 years experience. What? Working what? as a dishwasher, I was like, you want a lifer? <laughs> <laughs> to wash your dishes? No, sir, you do not. That's serious business. That's, no, really, but then you might start seeing signs pop up like that if you have people that live indefinitely. Maybe, depends on exactly how stupid people are and how often they kill themselves up. Um, accidents still happen. We may start seeing genetic stagnation. That might become an issue, but I don't think that it will. Because if people are still killing themselves off through accidents and everything like that, then people will still be having kids. And again, you might still see the reintroduction of natural selection people with poor genes that die from like heart attacks and heart disease and stuff like like things that aren't related to aging like are going to continue their genetic material out of the next generation which is unfortunate but i feel logically in my core <laughs> as a terrible person that we really desperately need that we have wandered so far away from natural selection for so long, we've damaged our genetic code to such an extent because we haven't had any form of anything that's been able to cull humans and say like, no, all you people, you're dead. You suck, all of you guys. You don't get to continue. The rest of you guys are awesome. You get to go on and, and be more humans. We haven't had that for thousands of years and it's hurting us. And I wanna see that come back peacefully. <laughs> I know, it doesn't sound like it's possible, but I'm making it happen, you'll see why. A wise man once said, you can have peace or you can have freedom. You can't have both. Was the wise man you? No. Can't be you? Not trying. Because here's the thing. Capitalism, North American society, Canada and the States have found this really nice line where they take away enough of our freedoms and give enough of our freedoms to us that we're happy. They take away freedoms for us to be able to, like, say, run through the streets and like shit on fire. <laughs> you can't do that. Um, yeah, people are like, oh, dang. Like, well, that's the thing. It's like they take away the freedoms from us that they don't feel that we need, but they let us keep ones that they think will allow us to still be happy and complacent because we are a population to them. We are a large group of humans they need to manage. So they're finding ways to do that, which is great. Yes. Um, I, I totally get what you're going with. Wouldn't that take the romance out of making children? Absolutely would, yes. Um, well, no, the romance, no. The accidental, oh, we're about to have a kid, yes. Because the, the, this is the thing, because, like, what is the romance of having a child? You just randomly decide that you're going to have a child one day and then go try? Or, as everybody that I know who has a kid at this point, save, like, five or six people, many of the people that I know who have children stopped made a bunch of adjustments to their lives, made sure that they were ready to have kids, made sure they had enough space to have a child, got the money put aside, got everything ready, got themselves in good health, and then started trying to have a kid. That literally built up for like two years, sometimes longer, like five years. They spent this time getting ready to have kids. And that's not wrong. Everyone, in my opinion, should be doing that. And it doesn't take the romance out of it. It just ensures that the child is born into a healthy environment. 
that the parents know what they're doing when they have a kid. Because there's too many times that someone's like, oh shit, I had another kid here. I don't know what the, I don't know, it's like a smaller me. <laughs> don't ask me questions. I don't know what's going on out here. I sure as hell ain't gonna tell you. Because <laughs> here's the thing. If you tell a businessman, anybody, any human, you tell a human that you need to recycle because it'll save the planet, they go, eh, fuck it. If you tell a human you need to recycle or I'm gonna find you money, they go, shit, I'm gonna get a blue bin. <laughs> That's what happened in the financial sector in Toronto. In, in Toronto in general, itself, like Southern Ontario basically said, great, so for businesses that have a lot of paper that they deal with and stuff like that, you're gonna start recycling or I'm gonna start charging you money. Every bag of garbage that you bring out of the building will cost you money. Every bag of recycling, however, that's free of charge. Doesn't cost you a penny to recycle. So they're like, damn. And so they still like, oh, there were blue bins all over the office. They were just, and, and they had a whole system set up and everything because you go after a man's heart, he will ignore you. You go after a man's wallet, you will have his attention. 